Okay, excellent. Well, uh, very nice to meet you. Thanks, thanks for speaking to me. I just wonder if, first of all, you could just tell us a little bit about the movie and, um, you know, the basic setup for the plot. Yeah, the um, the movie's, you know, it's a character comedy uh, based around Christmas time, a little unconventional. It's about two families who have lived across the road from each other in suburban New Jersey, and uh, they've been lifelong friends, uh, 25 years of living in each other's pockets. Uh, and this, this, our story is that when, you know, the cat is set among the pigeons when the prodigal daughter of one family uh, returns home, uh, having been away for a few years, and starts up a relationship with the father of the other family. So it's really about the ensuing chaos and emotional fallout and bizarre, sort of eccentric, hopefully funny journey after that. And what was it that first attracted you to it? When, how did you get involved, I guess? I got sent the script. I knew one of the writers, but it was just out there as a script. Um, I liked it because I thought you couldn't quite put your finger on what it was. Clearly it had to be funny. I, that was my first and foremost when I got the job and went out to make it, that it had to be funny. But it was it sort of defied your expectations a little bit. It was, you couldn't put your finger on, you know, it wasn't a conventional Hollywood studio movie. It wasn't uh, a kind of art house indie movie. It was something in between. It had character comedy and it had, it had pathos, but it, 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 um, it, it, it defied description. You know, ready categorization, and I, and I like that because then that takes you on a journey. You think, okay, this is going to need a, need a precise tone to pull it off. Like quite a lot of scripts that I read in Hollywood, I feel that you know I kind of shot them before I finish reading them. You know exactly what they want to be, and you know exactly it's in that model, and they're going to market it that way, and da 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 da. da. And this, you know, it's the ones that have this sort of journey of discovery that that appeal to me. And were any of the cat, cast attached before you? Got <clears throat> None at all. No. How did you go about? Picking them because I mean they're all kind of actors that have got a pedigree of doing drama and comedy, so it seems to fit together quite well. Well, it's a good observation because uh, I wanted number one, I wanted all the cast to be likable. That was the way I thought the story should be told. That you shouldn't. There are no real villains in it, and that's almost one of the surprises of the way the story falls out. Um, secondly, it had that blend of like proper actors, but that could do comedy, it had, you know, like I said, it had to be funny, but I wanted a sort of emotional, you know, sincerity, if you like. Uh, and then you know, these things come together in the way that you always, you know, it's part pragmatic, part, you know, you're, you're putting together families, so you, you're having, having, you're wanting great actors, but you're also having to see them as families and as partners and as relationships in the movie. I started with the character of David, which is Hugh Laurie's character, because it's the sort of focal point of the movie. It's an ensemble movie, but he and, and Leighton Meester's characters are like the first among equals. Um, and that was such a key bit of casting for me, because David's character... You know, it's in a certain way the villain of the piece. He starts an affair with the other guy's daughter. Um, but the key to the story was that it couldn't feel ever, you know, predatory. It's not really about a sort of cliche midlife crisis. It's not American Beauty in that sense. It's not about reasserting your sexuality or your your need to read, you know, prove your youth to yourself or drive a fast car. So it was Hugh's kind of essential decency that made me. So I hung everything on Hugh. I waited a year and a half for Hugh, and I wanted him, and I never budged from that. And was it hard to convince him? Because he no, hasn't really taken on a lead no, role in the long time. No, it's his first movie, uh, Hugh, Hugh's first movie since ha since he started on House. Um, so I was very flattered about that. It wasn't hard to to persuade him to do the movie. He met he's, he doesn't suffer fools, Hugh. We met, he just wanted a, my clear version of how I meant to tell the story. And we, we got on very well and that, that was fine. It was more the practical thing of getting the money and then the times in which we looked like we had the money coinciding with Hugh's you know, vastly greedy schedule on house. You know, he was day and night on that for eight months a year. So <clears throat> we ended up, I ended up missing one whole window of opportunity and waiting a whole year for the next one. Um, basically, I thought, you know, it, when Hugh's character opens the door and, and Nina's return, if you think that he wants to shagger at that moment on the thing, the movie dies, you know, the whole story falls apart. So I was pretty stubborn about Hugh and the rest fell into place in a pretty good way. If you get Catherine Keener in your movie in America, it's like a brand of quality. It's a good talent magnet. Other actors are like, oh, Catherine Keener's in it. You know, people love Hugh Laurie. You know, he doesn't have a movie star status because he's been a television star for these years. But Keener was a good, you know, she's like your, your sort of brand, your, your sort of emblem of class for an independent movie in America. So she was a great get. And then 
Oliver Platt and Alison Janney were like my first choices because they had the funny side of the road. I mean, the two houses, you know, we used to call the one with Alison and Oliver in it like the house of fun because they were always like hilarious. And then the other one was we called the house of pain because it was Hugh and Keena going through their sort of torture in the, in the fallout after the re relationship. And you mentioned that central relationship between Hugh's character and Leighton's character. And it's, it's very interesting that it's, you, you're right, it's not predatory, but at the same time it doesn't seem like Nina is they're trying to seduce him. It, it seems like something that evolves very naturally and then... Well, I hope so. It's, it happens as a little bit of an accident. It happens in a sort of moment and then, you know, Hugh's character initially understands the consequences and the conscience. It's not a selfish pursuit in his mind, but it is, as, you know, in his own life he's examining happiness and the movie kind of asks the question, is it wrong to pursue happiness in your life? And and the answer on the one hand is obviously yes, when it's at other people's expense, but Hugh's character kind of understands that. And the honesty of his pursuit is what really triggers the journey of all the other characters in, in a way that they wouldn't have asked for or expected. And that, for me, was the beauty of the movie. It was like your villain is really your, 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 your sort of catalyst for change in a good way. I mean, the movie's a, I always thought it was a feel-good movie, you know. So in America, when people talked about the premise as dark, I was always like, dark, really? I, I never saw it as dark, I just thought it's a cute script and it's funny and it's different um, you know and I joke I, you know if this movie was in France they'd be going like what scandal you know it was, <laughs> had a little bit more of a European sensibility to me like you know but in America it was like the dark premise and I guess you know for American audience it, it maybe is but it was never a dark movie I always thought it was very affirmative and kind of life in heart you know it was it was a sort of generous view of humanity that's why I liked it. And like you say, you've got Hugh, Hugh and Leighton's characters are the centre of the story, but they really kind of drive off to everyone else. Um, did, did you feel that, uh, that, that it was important to kind of introduce us to the story through someone else, through Alia Shawkat's characters, kind of give us that, that <coughs> view of the two films? It wasn't my idea. It was in the script that we had a sort of third, you know, sort of observer narrator who apparently is not at the centre of narrative events. You know, that's a slightly unusual thing. And I was like, oh, OK. And then... It seemed to me that the, I liked the idea of the offbeatness of that, and it was only really r doable if you felt by the end of the movie, like, aha, so it was her story as well. And in a funny way, Alia's character, Vanessa, is more stuck than anyone. You know, with middle age kind of routine and sort of the middle age stasis that the, the adult characters have, you think, okay, that's life, we all understand, you know, they use it. But for somebody who's young and talented to be stuck in a place was almost more critical so the idea was that by the end of the movie you go like aha so it was actually you know she with the apparent distance of that she tells the story is not actually the truth that she needed to move on as much as everybody else and then just from a personal point of view I wonder what what you've got planned in the future I mean, because you've done a lot of television work before it are you planning on going back to that or I, I go freely as my nose takes me and I work with HBO now in the States so I'm right now developing a half-hour comedy with Rob Brydon for them, um, which I hope will go. Um, I'm doing a movie which I'm working on the script will be a film that would come out of England, which I would love to do because it would bring me back to England. And that's a love story set before the First World War. It's called Half the Human Race and uh, a novel by Tony Quinn, who is actually the film critic of The Independent, um, but lovely novelist. Uh, and if we could do that, fantastic, you know, um, but completely different genre. Um, but I never feel genre bound, you know. It's, it's you yeah. tend, to, tend to get a little pigeonholed in America. The people think of me as the comedy guy, but you know, I didn't really do comedy before I went there. But uh, it's not a bad tag as long as people find this film funny. Right. Well, good luck with all of that, and congratulations on the oranges. Thank and you very thanks much. a lot for speaking to us. Ah, pleasure. My Thank pleasure. You.